That was a joke. Yeah, no, I've got it. Hilarious. The phrase, be careful what you wish for, has never been so relevant. An adaptation should stand on its own. This is a concept I've stood by and continue to stand by. I shouldn't have to divulge in third-party materials to understand what's happening in your story. The Halo series, however, put that concept to the test. I really like Halo. I've played all the games up to 5 and considering what the fanbase has said, apparently I made the right choice. But I have some fond memories of playing the first Halo with my dad at much too young of an age. If you saw my Halo Landfall review, you'll know I consider that the best live action adaptation we've gotten so far. And after seeing the entire Paramount series, that's still the case. Now regarding the adaptation argument, is this a series that's loyal to the Halo IP? No! Now you all may be asking, would the story they're trying to tell be good if it wasn't attached to the Halo IP? No! This show and its execution decided to more or less tell its own story using the Halo world as its backdrop. Concept-wise, it's an okay concept, I guess. However, ideas are cheap. They're so cheap, in fact, they're literally free. Think about something right now. Anything. That thought was free. Congratulations, guys. You did it. Efficiency in your execution of that idea is what truly matters. There's a decent percentage of people out there who think the series actually has a good story to tell that stands on its own merits with well-written characters. I'm gonna be doing my best to explain why they're WRONG whilst also explaining why this is a poor Halo adaptation. Now, I won't be going through the series episode by episode because I, 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 I don't, I don't want to be depressed anymore. I'm just going to be doing my best to explain why the series is the epitome of a flood carrier form waddling around until it stumbles and blows up. The original Halo franchise under Bungie literally redefined storytelling and gaming, and I'm not being facetious or overzealous in that statement. If Halo was devoid of its campaign, this would be another sci-fi arena shooter. There's a percentage of the world who would skip the campaign and go straight to Halo's multiplayer, and that's completely fine. Multiplayer is great, it's incredible fun, really engaging, and helps build a sense of community. But that isn't what made Halo popular in the first place. After all, the original Halo was released before Xbox Live was. Why would all the promotional material be pushing the campaign? Why would the campaign be the very first thing in the menu? Why would 343 invest large amounts of money just to redesign cutscenes over a decade old? Simply because Halo was a beloved and compelling story. If you did skip the campaigns, then there's no easy way to say it, but you missed out on one of the greatest video game stories ever told. And also Breaking Benjamin in action. The story had problems, for sure. It wasn't perfect. But its campaign combined with being the flagship that launched Xbox Live into the stratosphere is undoubtedly what put this franchise on the map. I recommend everyone go play the original Bungie Halo campaigns. In fact, turn this off right now and go play them if you haven't yet. The reason I bring up this camp of players who've never played the Halo campaigns, which is still completely fine, is because it almost seems that's the mindset that was brought into making Halo the series, which is incredibly story-based. There's huge normie energy radiating from this show. Anything that may entice or attract fans of the campaign is all surface level member berries. And lots of them. Member the Mjolnir member armor. Member the Covenant. Member the Prophet. Member the Spartan laser. Member Dr. Halsey. Member Cortana. Member Sandtrap. I member, member the Energy Sword. Member the Brutes. Member the Halo theme. All of this is thrown into the show to bait Halo fans while simultaneously telling a poorly crafted story and completely shitting on the originals at every opportunity. Almost as if the creators didn't play the campaigns or know anything about the story aside from iconography. The world regarding the Halo games is an environment where humanity is up against the ropes being exterminated planet by planet by an alien coalition called the Covenant. Humanity's best hope is a faction of super soldiers called Spartans. Throughout the games, you play as the Master Chief, the last Spartan. A mostly silent protagonist with which you defend humanity, fight back against the Covenant, and explore installation worlds developed by an ancient species called the Forerunners. 
The Halo series is a landmark for video games, giving us a very rich story throughout Bungie's tenure filled with interesting characters, bombastic action sequences, and meaningful character arcs that made it one of the most popular and one of the most beloved stories in video game history. And Paramount didn't focus on it! This series had a solid story delivered to them on a silver fucking platter, but they chose to muddy the waters with ideas that were not the focus of Halo's story. These ideas were in the games, however the primary focus was on the extermination of humanity. It's kind of like in Game of Thrones where these squabbles over who sits on the Iron Throne mean nothing because a horde of ice zombies are marching south to destroy everything. Independence for the insurrectionists, much like the Iron Throne, do not matter in the grand scheme of things. This show dedicates immense amounts of time on certain topics like child kidnapping and indoctrination, do the ends justify the means, a militaristic government and how cutthroat they can be, and a rebellion versus Empire B plot. These ideas were in the games but were never the focus of the story because the story was centered around the total annihilation of humanity, a generally agreeable bad thing. This show gives us characters that contemplate whether or not that is a bad thing. It gives us entire episodes focused on the backstory of the Spartans and the rediscovery of their humanity. Again, these are not bad concepts to explore in general. However, when you have a genocidal war taking place, they seem very trivial as compared to the extinction of the human race. Now before I blow a Mac round into the show, I'd like to talk about some things I actually do like. Much like everything in regards to modern storytelling, the production is great. A lot of money got thrown into this. I like some of the action. Just know I'll likely have all the cool action bits in this review so you aren't really missing anything. I like the member berries. All of that was nice. I like how the show gave jackals energy swords. I know they have some religious significance in the games, however considering this is an adaptation, I think that was a nifty decision. I like how the grunts aren't just fodder and can actually be effective in the battlefield. I dig how John can use the energy shield, definitely some catharsis there from wanting to use them in the games. I think all the actors are doing their best, even if most of them are not good by any means, so credit where credit is due. I also really like Vanek, most of the time. And I enjoyed Jen Taylor as Cortana. The design presented in the trailer did not look as such in the show and was much better presented even if her character was completely botched. And uh, just going through my notes, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really just casting in the superficial elements. Now, what an absolute travesty on a galactic scale. How much more could you fuck up a Halo adaptation? This series plot is bogged down and clogged by John Halo trying to rediscover his humanity when that was never an issue in the games. The Master Chief was a mostly silent protagonist, the vehicle with which we play through the games, but he is not absent of a character. Everything you say, don't say, and most importantly do says something about your character. Why do you think Chief leans in close to Cortana in certain scenes? Or when he bangs on the wall of the drop pod when Johnson does it? Or when he pulls a gun on the Arbiter? These scenes are indicative of a character. These are choices he's making, meaning he's not devoid of autonomy, compassion, nor humanity. Sure, he may not be as social as us civilians or even other members of the military, but this series implies that's something he has to rediscover which minimizes the character he had in the original games. Adaptations are allowed to exist and thrive, but the issue is in the show, he isn't a good character in his own right. John Halo is an emotionally irrational character that carries grudges, willingly compromises the mission, attacks senior members of his faction, and commits war crimes. I'm not Josh and either, having sexual relations with a POW is a war crime. How do people like this character? The second he removes his emotional inhibitor chip, which is also really fucking stupid because indoctrination is not a pill, he should be benched. He is experiencing emotions, stress, and sensations he has never felt before. He is compromised both emotionally and mentally. He is incapable of making rational decisions. This might be an unpopular opinion, but I think the idea that John is vehemently against Halsey and the Spartan program after learning about everything, the child kidnappings and indoctrination, is a much more shallow position than the one presented in the games. Where he is aware of everything and yet accepts it, seeing it as an overall positive for humanity. It's his sacrifice for the greater good. That's much more interesting on a character level to ponder about than what we were given in this show which isn't challenging at all because of course child kidnapping and indoctrination is ethically wrong. But when measured against the extermination of humanity? The games ask these questions without overtly asking them. 
they were very much hidden in the subtext of the story, but the creators of the show likely wouldn't know because their knowledge of Halo was surface level. It was geared around iconography, weapon designs, and the barest of plot points to pander. The Master Chief wasn't the chosen one archetype, until Halo 4 took a shit all over it. He was just a guy who was really good at his job. He knew his place in the well-oiled machine that was the UNSC. He is a doer, a man of action and little words, but he will give his insight and perspective when asked. I think we can all agree this character is much more likable than this character, and that is a crippling problem with this show. Your protagonist is unlikable. You know, at first I had an issue with John never wearing his armor much like all of you, but now I'm kind of happy he doesn't so I don't have to associate him with the real Master Chief. Thank you! Maki could have been an interesting character. Maybe she had a good reason for wanting the Covenant to eradicate the humans that goes beyond some childhood trauma, but no, her friend got killed by a guard and now she thinks all of humanity is flawed. That's so narrow-sighted it has my mind boggled. Does she hold this sort of standard to the Covenant? After all, there must be some bad eggs in the Covenant who will murder a child and yet we have no reason why she thinks humanity should be wiped out. Backstory is not reasoning. This is like when Boba Fett completely changed as a character and people use the he lived with the Tusken Raiders backstory to justify the shift in morals and mentality. Also, I just want to highlight that this backstory is cartoonish in nature. It could be well executed, except we have a cartoonishly oppressive police force that executed a kid for having fun? Like, I'm not exaggerating, they're sitting there reading together, they get chased, and her friend gets beaten to death for having fun. This is a cartoon! Hey you kids, stop having fun! Maki's prominent role in the Covenant is that she's considered a blessed one, much like Chief is. This is hinting at the idea that they have Forerunner DNA, which was definitely just an ancient version of humans in the games, and is why a human can activate Forerunner tech. You are Forerunner! But this ring is mine! But in the series, it's just these two. They're actually the chosen ones. Two in a billion. But her role in the Covenant introduces a long list of issues in regards to their religion. Humanity is an affront to the gods and they need to be exterminated. Simple. Her being part of the Covenant devalues the irony in the games. The irony is that humanity is the only species who can inherit Forerunner technology, so the Covenant are wiping out the successors of their gods. If Maki and John Halo are some of the only humans who can now do this, then that takes away from the gravity of exterminating humans due to religious extremism. If Maki, a human, is now part of the Covenant, which is openly eradicating humanity, why is she being sent on deathly missions and covert ops? Isn't she like incredibly necessary for them to achieve their goals? Maki is the Halo version of Kylo Ren, completely inconsistent. They change their minds on a whim, being whiplashed by whatever the writers need them to do. She hates humans, then she likes humans, then she hates humans, then she wants to escape into a Halo vision world even though she knows it's not real and then she dies. Like, where's the arc? Where's the character? I can't name a single thing about her other than her position in the Covenant and her backstory. Why do these two like each other? They know nothing about each other other than they're both chosen ones. This sex scene was one of the most forced love stories I've ever seen. It's just, he brings her a book, they have sex, now they love each other. With the least amount of development between these events. Absolutely dreadful. Cortana has no reason to like John. He treats her like shit throughout the whole series so it makes no sense why she goes out of her way for him when Halsey decides to execute Order 66. John treats her like shit throughout this entire show and yet she's on his side for no other reason than she has to. Jen Taylor was like a life raft in the middle of the ocean. Every time she spoke I felt some major nostalgic heebie jeebies but she's not nearly as snarky or quippy as she was in the games which gave her a lot of character and personality. Nor are any of her decisions earned. She just does things because of the script rather than because she believes in them. Cortana is also no longer a ship in combat AI. She's essentially a virus designed to consume and take control of Chief if he steps out of line. Like, does this not send major red flags for fans of the games? The people this show is appealing to? They're baiting us with iconography we're all familiar with and shitting on it at the same time. Dr. Halsey in this show is the typical mad scientist you've seen before. She created the Spartans not to quell threats like insurrectionists or the Covenant, but to protect humanity from itself? And she doesn't explain what she means by that. 
She just says we're selfish and greedy and so the Spartans were designed to propel us into our next stage of evolution. I guess they're supposed to do that by eliminating emotions because emotions make us weak? Like, did a 16 year old write this script? The show absolutely portrays Halsey as intrinsically evil, whereas in the games, it was more she's complicated. Your primary objective, Commander, are you a puppet or a Spartan? Ma'am? I'll let you guys decide which is a more interesting character to explore. Miranda Keys in the games wasn't the most compelling character. She was mostly a replacement for her father who died in the first game, a headstrong captain hoping to fill her father's shoes when needed, doing the best job she can and never allowing herself nor her past to take precedence. For some reason in the show, they changed her from a captain to a scientist. I'm assuming so we can have this really compelling mother-daughter power struggle between scientists. But even if she is a scientist, then why is she being told to negotiate with insurrectionist prisoners? Shouldn't someone like trained to do this be, you know, doing this? Olive Gray is not a good actress. She overacts in basically every scene. A lot of her lines could be read with a lot of subtext. However, that subtext is brought right to the surface due to her performance. Like take the Quan negotiation scene, for example. The way she's acting tells us that Quan has all the power in this conversation due to how uncertain and unsure Miranda comes off as regarding her facial emotes and body language. What negotiator would hold this level of uncertainty? Why is she even in this situation? Oh, I swear the show has so many pick your flaw moments. Miranda starts to have a very shaky relationship with Jacob in the series because she doesn't get what she wants. Like Jacob tells her she's off the artifact project and leaves it to Halsey and Miranda is the biggest brat about it because she isn't working on the big important thing. Like honey, you are in the military. She has no level of professionalism about her. She's not even good at her job. Like if you can't handle being taken off projects, then why are you even here? Miranda is telling Maki a POW information about a recent attack. Like why? They aren't friends and she certainly can't be trusted. Miranda, are you stupid? She also resents Jacob for being complicit in the Spartan program, which is fine. I kind of like that this resentment comes to light, but a simple conversation with her father could easily clear up some assumptions she's probably making about the situation. I have no major complaints about Jacob in this show other than he's Halsey's punching bag for a lot of the series. I think Danny Sopani is doing his best to try and emulate something from the original character, but this just was not a good character. He cares about his daughter, that's nice, and he's complicit in Halsey's crimes of kidnapping children and turning them into super soldiers, so he tries to make right by it, but I don't think the ramifications of that will bleed into season two. But I'll never know since I'm not gonna fucking watch it. He's just a really flat character, much like his daughter. He's remorseful about some of his decisions and he likes his daughter, that's his character. Also, Jacob is a captain, like of a ship. Not even referencing the games, that's just what a captain is. So why is he treated in the show like an admiral or a general? He's involved in these bigwig meetings as if he has some say in how things are ran. Quan sucks, and her fucking haircut sucks too. She's just the fucking worst. She wants to lead a resistance against the UNSC whilst ignoring the beginning of the show and pretending like aliens aren't exterminating humanity. She's never wrong. There's no lesson for her to learn other than she has the ability to lead and protect. She hates Soren even though he's done nothing but try and protect her. She hates John because, I don't know, I guess she's racist against the UNSC, and she reeks of edgy, ignorant idealism that the show begs you to accept rather than the reality of the situation. She goes on this whole adventure with Soren trying to take down Venture to honor her ancestors and her father or something, and it's the most B-plot plot to ever B-plot. It adds nothing to the overall season. It might bleed into season two, but I'm not watching another season of this shit, like I said. Fuck Quan and fuck this whole B-plot. I don't know what they were doing with Aiden, but he's just a cartoon. He's Halsey's simp assistant who has a weird fetish for her since he tried to sexually assault her clone. This is real. When Silver Team is told to evacuate the artifact, he's just screaming at the top of his lungs that the artifact stays with him. Like, dude, nah, that's the military's property till they get it out of there. You should know this. I don't get the point. Is this character supposed to be funny? Fun? Uh, creepy? What is the point of him? The UNSC sucks in the show. Not because they're outgunned, outmanned, and fighting a losing battle like in the games, but because they're extremely incompetent in the show. When Halsey is thrown to the dogs for her abduction of children, she then executes Order 66, making it so the Spartans betray the UNSC and steal the artifact for her. Why would Spartans report directly to Halsey? 
She's a scientist, not a general. Like, what is chain of command in the show? In one episode, Miranda sneaks into a debriefing taking place between Halsey and John whilst being overseen by Jacob and Perengoski because they want to know what's being said, but Miranda is just allowed to join in with no clearance? Because she's curious? John can just walk in and touch the artifact when he chooses when that would be under lock and key at all times because it's hyper important. This object can save humanity. Like, how do things get done in this military? There's no cameras in the POW room, they put people in positions they shouldn't be in, this family squabbling overshadows the big picture almost entirely, and the big picture is that humanity is being exterminated. They transformed the UNSC into some evil militaristic government because military is crooked and bad, which is ironic since the show is sponsored by the US Marines. They want Quan executed for absolutely no reason other than to flex how cutthroat they are when they could have still used her to some degree. Like, Quan's threat to Miranda is so absurd and minuscule. This is a ridiculous order to give and has absolutely no thought behind it. The UNSC hired Venture to be the new approved spokesperson for Madrigal, and sure, he's kind of a slimy dude, but the insurrectionists aren't getting the big picture. Even when one of their camps gets annihilated by the Covenant, they're not like, yeah, there's totally a bigger threat out there than the Civil War, maybe we should handle that first. This is like aliens coming down during an Earth civil war, destroying entire cities, and the world doesn't unite under this threat because one side is too petty. Like, do you know what's at stake? We can get back to the idea of independence when we can confirm you'll be alive to enjoy it. Considering what I mentioned earlier with Maquis, the Covenant doesn't go unscathed either. They're pretty violent and indiscriminate in their genocide, most of the time, but they also suffer from bullshit writing. Like how they landed on Madrigal only to search for this artifact when they should have brought a fleet and laid waste to Madrigal shortly after discovering this artifact? Like this happened in Halo 2. Regret just stumbled upon the Ark Portal which just so happened to be on Earth and he brought a fleet with him just in case. And believe it or not, in this show we have no reason why the Covenant waged war against the humans. We know that it's because the prophets deemed humanity an affront to their gods, but that's only if you have knowledge of the games. None of that is in the series. Statistically speaking, someone watched this show without knowledge of the games and the Covenant's motivation is never clear. So we have a villain with their motivation never exposited. They leave their holy planet undefended with minimal forces because they didn't expect humans to be able to find it? Th that's really dumb. That's really fucking dumb. But the biggest sin is you never get the feeling that humanity is fighting a losing battle against the Covenant in the show until the second to last episode where they have to remind you of it. Even if in this adaptation they aren't fighting a losing battle, it's much less interesting than the idea of humanity up against the ropes. Like what would us humans do in that circumstance to get an edge in the fight? How do we keep order and a level of competence when we're at the precipice of extermination? These are interesting ideas that the show ignores because you never feel like humanity is being exterminated. We can still have our independent squabbles, people can sit the fight out because they have that privilege, the keys can afford to have family drama come between them. The show has to remind you throughout that the Covenant are a threat to humanity not by their actions but by our characters telling us rather than showing us. The only two scenes we have is the beginning scene where the Covenant attack Madrigal indiscriminately and the scene where Criterion is getting glassed. You could easily write the Covenant off in this show as a mild annoyance the UNSC has to work around rather than the looming existential threat that they were presented as in the games. There's so little gravitas given to the Prophets. Like they just show up. When the Prophets were introduced in Halo 2, it's very clear regarding their position in the hierarchy. You don't even need dialogue, you understand the Covenant's dynamic completely just by watching this scene. There is more world building, character, and overall quality in this scene alone than the entirety of this season. What in the hell do the artifacts do? They give John visions of his past, EMPs a city and restores power to the one thing John needs. One of them starts making John sick, they communicate with each other, they can show a map to the halo, it puts the touchers in this weird vision halo world, it can emit shockwaves. Like you cannot predict what this thing is going to do next. It's just whatever the plot will require it to do. I don't believe Miranda when she says it's organic, the fuck? Which part of this is organic? Does organic have a different definition than the textbook one? Where is the living matter on this thing? So they introduced magic in the Halo universe. 
Like Quan goes to visit the old ladies from Mad Max Fury Road and they start doing magic tricks and they send Quan into a vision quest where she has to fight John Halo and then she's shown her ancestors and a monitor which she has never seen either of those or has any knowledge of them so this is definitely magic. Part of the glory of the Halo universe is even with the amazing things Forerunner technology could do, you could almost tell why the Covenant religion revolved around it even if it is still technology. Guilty Spark is a robot, Halo is a weapon, the Ark was designed and built. There is no magic but the technology walked that line, but in this show they just have fucking magic. These ladies are even called witches. Chief removes his emotion inhibitor chip from the base of his spine. Why is his emotion chip at the base of his spine? Why wouldn't they put it in his brain or closer to it? Also, he's just poking at his spine with a knife. He could have done this with some underwear on, but I'm assuming all this is just so we can see Master Cheek's juicy ass. A lot of the action in this show is really janky. Like in this scene where the weapons can't do anything to the elites, but when the Spartans arrive, they actually have an effect on them. Like ER said, with plot armor comes plot weapons. So the Covenant are attacking the UNSC and John decides to board a Banshee but shoots the pilot through the hole with a pistol. W -w what is this Banshee made out of paper mache? John also decides to 9-11 the Banshee into a phantom and it does this. Mm -hmm, yeah sure I totally believe he survived that. This elite just starts punching Kai so Kai can survive rather than being shot in the head by a plasma pistol. John says the line to Cortana. Cortana, I'm gonna need a weapon. But he's saying it to Cortana. How the fuck is she gonna get you one? She's in your head, bro. It makes sense in these scenarios because they actually can get you a weapon, you melon. The Spartans try to kill John when Halsey explicitly said to bring him in. Kai can run like 60 miles an hour until she needs to chase Halsey down a hallway. Paramount, you're just being lazy now. Okay, okay, so Silver Team is about to head into Covenant controlled space and they're offered 10 battalions. 10,000 marines to go with them and for some reason John Halo says no because he says there'll be 10,000 dead marines and Silver Team can handle it. Look, maybe it's because I haven't played the Power Rangers Halo games but last I remembered the Spartans were part of the military, not isolated from it doing its own thing. Like Master Chief can do some pretty exceptional and amazing things, but it's not just him. There's a whole war being waged and the marines there with you are a part of that. You know, Reach is all about this. Noble is communicating directly with military command, they're leading evacuations, being sent to other locations, leading full on assaults, recovering info, relaying and receiving orders. Spartans are part of the military, they work in unison with marines and ODSTs. They're not the Power Rangers being sent in without backup because they can handle it. Like what if you can't? Those 10,000 gun barrels would probably help. People on Madrigal use modern weaponry in the year 2550 fucking 2. That's like if we still use flintlock pistols and muskets today. Like was your budget short? What the hell? The ending of this season feels very petty. Here's some context. So Silver Team is getting their asses kicked and John tells Cortana to take over but she doesn't know if she can give back control. So Chief lets himself get killed and we get a version of the character most resembling the Chief from the games. And yet the show is portraying this as a sad thing. Almost as if to say, here fans, you finally got the chief you wanted, but at the cost of the man under the helmet. Well good, fuck him. I didn't like him or his character anyways. Also, Cortana can just summon a condor to shoot all the aliens like a Call of Duty killstreak. Why couldn't she do that before? Why did she need Chief's body to do that? Is that something John could have done all along? If so, John's a fucking idiot. Why do I get the feeling this whole Cortana possessing John plot is gonna be dropped in season two? And finally, we have Reach City on Planet Reach. Yeah, this show has anti-creativity. So there's some pretty decent evidence that this was originally going to be a Mass Effect show. I don't know shit about Mass Effect, but uh, let me find, uh, here, here it is. Pause this and take a gander and see what you think. I don't know if this theory is legit, but all I know is this show is completely botched. As much as I described the story of the Halo games being a story of humanity up against the ropes, it never took itself too seriously. There was a level of fun and comedy that was present. It seems all of that died with Johnson because now Halo wants to take itself deadpan seriously, especially the show. There's so much unnecessary drama when you can accomplish more by doing less. Why wasn't this just a pure adaption of the first game? 
You could have made an episode out of each level, or it could have just been a fun show about the UNSC versus the Covenant and you could have some dialogue that expands the world in interesting ways. The best parts of the show are on par with the worst parts of the games. Paramount, you had it all laid out for you on a silver platter. Halo, one of the strongest pillars in regards to video game storytelling. It was done. All you had to do was adapt it and you blew it. My god, I didn't expect much from the trailers, but I didn't expect this. It didn't even have to be as good a story as the original Halo, but you made a story that is bad in its own right. There's no amount of love for the source material in the show. There are only references to make fans like me say, I, I understood that reference. It almost feels like there's complete disdain for the source material. The character assassinated a character I didn't even think you could assassinate. They completely misrepresented the Halo IP as a whole even if it has its own story. No one in this show is likable on or under the surface. The plot is a garbled mess combining some of the most generic story tropes of all fiction. It has the B plot to end all B plots and you made the UNSC completely incompetent. Paramount and 343 should be ashamed of themselves. Like this show reeks of ego. Nah, we're a Paramount Plus series, we're telling a real story unlike those games. You are so caught up in changing the story that you forgot to tell a good story and that's the big problem here. Satisfy your core audience and the rewards will follow. Franchises should not be trying to appeal to a broader audience, especially when that audience is broad in the first place. That never works. If you keep your core audience satisfied, they will spread the good word about your product and more will follow. This is true in all forms of media, whether it's music, movies, or video games. Pandering does not work. If your knowledge of a property is only surface level, maybe you shouldn't be working on it. Understand that you are not right for everything. I know very little about Star Trek. I'm only familiar with iconography and names, so I'm not going to try to write a script for a franchise I know very little about, even if it is a good job financially. And that's because I don't want to make a disloyal product. Have some pride in your work and what you do and who you're doing it for. Jesus Christ, no wonder the season 1 showrunner left before the series even aired. I'd be embarrassed to have my name attached to this. I haven't played Halo in years, but I'm gonna have to change that. I didn't realize how much I cared about a story and a world until I saw it mutilated and disrespected as much as this show did. This is, without doubt, one of the worst video game adaptations to date, and without doubt one of the most cookie cutter, stale, and poorly crafted stories to be stapled to the Halo IP, a franchise revered for its quality storytelling. <sighs> Well, what's next? Um, uh, God damn it.